Okay, so today we were working on a worksheet, and when we got to the end of that worksheet, we were asked to solve um, quadratic equations or expressions, um, quadratic expressions, I should say, um, that were equal to zero, and we realized that we can't solve some of these using the factoring methods that we had previously. So this worksheet that we were working on is really trying to get us to learn how to use the completing the square method because that method can be used to solve any quadratic expression um, and not just ones that we already know how to factor. So to um, look at what we had in the beginning of this worksheet, we were looking at something like y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. And when we were writing this down using our algebra tiles, we realized that, well, we can split this b term that we have in two to make it so that it's equal on both sides of our x squared term, which would make it so that it's a perfect square. And that the remaining four that we have here at the end, well, if we think of this as having a length of x, and this as a length of x, and that each of these having a length of one, which means that we have a positive two length for both of those sides, we know that if this positive two translates to up to here, and this one translates to over here, this area here is gonna be a plus four. And so we can use all of our plus, all of our plus one tiles, all four of them, to fill up the remaining space and give us this plus four. So when we look at what we have made with our algebra tiles, we know that you can take this portion here and this portion here and multiply them together, and that would give us our same expression. Or in other words, we could say that this is equal to x plus two times x plus two, or x plus two squared, because we know when we add two terms together, it's the square of the term. So, um, looking now at a different example, we see we're given one that is not a complete square, and we have to learn how to, what to do with that. So, we can now look at something that's like x squared plus four x plus three. And now this one looks very similar to this one, so I'm just gonna write it out right now with our algebra tiles. We again have the two on either side, we split up our B term, and, um, but this time we don't have enough ones to fill in our space. So we've got three of them and we're missing one. So what we do is we wanna add in one more tile here to make it so we have a completed square. But when we do that, we know that this, adding this in, is not the same thing because now we have four ones instead of three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use what we call a zero pair. And a zero pair allows us to add one in to our, our square here, and then we remove one. So what we have is now something that is the same quantity, but with a completed square in it. And we can write this as, I'll write it right here, we now still have this x here and x here and plus two here and plus three here. So we can continue to write that down as x plus two times x plus two or x plus two squared. And then this final term here that we've tacked on um, because of our zero pair, we just add on to the end. So we would be adding this negative one in. And then if we were to square this all out, we would see that it's directly equivalent to this. So to develop a, gen a general form of finding uh, completed or co of completing the square, um, we can see that what we've always been doing is we're taking half of our b term. So we can say that this term right here and this term right here will always be b over two, which means that this term right here is always going to be b over two when we look at the general form. So we can now write this as x plus b over two squared. Now, of course, we're not always gonna have a balanced equation. Our b over two squared, when we square this out, we really get x squared uh, plus bx plus b over two squared. And this b over two squared isn't always equal to our c. So what we can do is we can now think of this as we can subtract our b over two squared. This would be what our zero pair would be when we were looking over at our first expression. And um, then add it back into c. So our 
final product for the general form of completing the square will be that it will look like y equals x plus b over 2 squared plus c minus b over 2 squared. So now we can apply this and look at uh, one of the problems, or a problem similar to the one that we had at the end of our worksheet. So I'm going to give the problem x squared, let's see, x squared plus 4x minus 1. And we want to know what values of x make it so that this is equal to 0. I'm going to box this off here. So um, we could use our algebra tiles, but let's uh, apply this general form that we've done. So we can take this, um, this b term that we have, divide it in, uh, by 2, and plug it right into this. So we have now that x plus 2 squared. Now we need to look at our c term, and we see that our c term is a negative 1 here. So we put our negative 1 down, and now we look at this b over 2, and we square it, so b over 2 again is 2, we square that term, and we get 4, and we know that we need to subtract that, so minus 4. So our end product will be x plus 2 squared minus 5 is equal to um, 0. So to solve this, we all, all we have to do now is add our 5 over, so I'll go up here, x plus 2 squared equals 5, take the square root of both sides, x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5, and then finally subtract the 2 over. So our x will be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. And if you apply this to any of the problems that you have, it would work, but the special power of this is that it works even when we can't factor.